Okay, now it's time for more Big Mama. So we know this reaction from when discussing enthalpy, and remember enthalpy delta H equals positive for an endothermic reaction, and it's going to be negative for an exothermic reaction. And now we can look at something known as entropy, and notice that this is a little bit different. There's no H in there. Entropy is a uh, shown with a symbol or a variable of S, and it's a measure of disorder, a measure of disorder. And um, basically, our universe tends towards disorder. It's always, entropy is always increasing. So if we're talking about a change in entropy, remember, a change in anything is always going to be final minus initial. So this is what you need to know, that if entropy is increasing, we say, that delta S is a positive value, and if it's decreasing, we say it's a negative value. That's easy enough to see. Okay, so I'm going to skip through most of these examples that we talk about in class, but here's some, um, here you can just visually see uh, between a solid, liquid, and gas what happens to be most disordered. And we come to this, which you see now in your notes. It says, for the following processes, determine if delta S is positive or negative. And so we just want to think about what's going on. Um, with water boiling, it's going to become more disordered. In other words, you have a liquid that's going to a gas. So therefore, more disordered, our delta S is going to be a positive value. And if you have water freezing, it's going to be less disordered. And that's a situation where you have a liquid going to a solid. So therefore, your delta S is going to be a negative value. Maybe you even want to think about your heating curve looking something like that, solid, liquid, and gas. Remember, that's going to be exothermic. Says. And it's going to be endothermic moving in this direction. So I know that's enthalpy, but maybe you can think about how that also relates to entropy. So next question is, what about dissolving sugar in water? Well, if you're dissolving something, it goes from a solid to an aqueous substance. Sounds to me like that's going to be more disordered. So therefore, our delta S is going to be a positive value. And then the last little example on this one is going to be mixing two solutions and forming a precipitate. So you have two solutions, and you end up getting a solid out of them. So you've got less, you've got more order, or less disordered. So therefore, your delta S is a negative value. Now, for these, it says for the following reactions, first predict the sign of delta S. So that's what we're going to start doing, is just predicting. We're not going to worry about any numbers at all. And it says note a change in, um, in state takes precedence over a change in the number of particles. So we'll see an example of that. If you have something like our first one here, where we have NH3 is a gas plus hydrochloric acid is a gas, and it goes to ammonium chloride as a solid. You have two moles gas that are going to one mole of a solid. So you're going from a gas to a solid, so it's becoming more ordered or less disordered. So therefore, we would expect our delta S to be a negative value. You're probably going to need to leave some room space for yourself here to um, come back and plug in some numbers at some point. Okay, number two. Here we have gas going to a gas, so no phase change at all, but notice our number of particles. We have one particle going to two particles, so we've got more disorder. One mole gas going to two moles of gas, so it's going to be more disordered. Therefore, our delta S is going to be a positive value.
And then our last example here, we have um, notice that we've got a gas and a gas going to a gas and a liquid. Well, we have nine moles of gas, nine moles gas going to a total of 10 moles. It might sound like it's uh, more disordered because it's nine going to 10. However, you can't really see this. There we go. However, we see that one of these substances is a liquid. So that's what your instruction said about um, trumping. The change in state takes precedence over a change in number of particles. We actually have a change in state. That's going to be the important thing, that you have uh, your gas going to a liquid. So it's more ordered or less disordered. Therefore, your delta S is going to be a negative value. And now what we want to do is we want to come back and see how this works with Big Mama. If we were to actually throw in some numbers into this formula, notice that the only thing that changed about this formula now is instead of having H's, we have S's in this formula. Again, you're going to have to use your reference table that you were given, and you're just going to plug in some values. So here's Big Mama's formula. Um, first one, we are going to say that delta S is going to equal our products, which we have one, and make sure you're looking up the right, um, the right under the right heading. This needs to be for entropy. It's for your your S value, and it's going to be times 94.6, and we subtract that. We subtract our reactants from that, which is going to be one times 192.45, and then one times 186.908. Okay, and this equals, when we do our math, we end up getting negative 284.758. And that is, sorry, that's in joules for Kelvin. Um, I think that for this next one, or the next couple, what I'm going to do is just go through and through the magic of video, I'm going to stop this and I'm just going to write them all down because you don't need to listen to me saying it. Okay, so now we see that we go through the calculations and just like we predicted, this is a positive one for our second uh, problem. We have a positive delta S value, just like we predicted. And we have a negative delta S value, just like we predicted on the last one as well. And if I were to just jump back here, we would see that on number one, we predicted a negative value, and that's exactly what we got. So let me go back again so you can copy that. That is it.